What's your worst fan experience? I would say Reading Festival was an experience in itself. I had a lot of girls come over saying, are you okay? Love. <laughs> We're going into love. Wow. I love these questions. Who was your first love? Has life changed since you started your pod? Do you know one thing that I've actually got better at is talking? <laughs> Which is ironic, isn't it? Because I sit here and talk. Hey guys, welcome back to another season of Amy Charlize's Private Story. This new series is going to be so, so good because I'm so excited to share even more about my world as I keep you guys up to date with everything that's going on in my life and spill even more tea. If you're new here, I'm a content creator with a passion for all things beauty and fashion and I love to overshare and tell you guys a bit too much so on this podcast you can expect things about my relationships, friendships and even more. And every week I'm joined by other influencers, celebrities, my own family members and friends to talk all about the latest gossip, their picnics and their very own private stories. And I want you guys to keep getting involved just like you did last season. So please make sure to keep sending in your latest stories, questions and dilemmas for us to work through in this judgment free zone. So welcome back to my private story. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of My Private Story. So you can probably guess from even just the title of this video that we've actually got no one else on the sofa with us today. It's just me and you and the microphone because I feel like so much has happened recently and it's really, really hard for me to be able to like give it all to you guys on a YouTube video or on TikTok and Snapchat. So coming on here, it's just like my own little world with my own little sofa and we can just talk about everything that's happened, talk about different topics because you guys have actually been asking so much recently about certain topics so I thought we could go through them together and yeah just kind of have a good chit chat because I feel like I've missed you guys and obviously I've been so intrigued in all the different people that I've had on recently's lives because I feel like we've had some really really good guests but it's all good to have you know a chit chat just me and you too so therefore it's just us today um but I've actually got some questions and different topics so starting off I've actually been asked about school a lot recently I know you guys have gone back to school if you are still in that year um, of being in school but I feel like it's a topic that you guys ask me about a lot because obviously as some of you may know I didn't have the best time at school but I would like to add I did have a good time sometimes so I think it's important to like you know as much as it is a crap time and like I didn't enjoy it at at all really I still had parts of me that liked certain bits that's kind of you know making the most out of times that you don't really like finding the things that you do love at school so first of all do you have any advice for surviving school? I love how surviving's part of school. Like, that sounds so deep. But I do feel like it is like, you know, when you're at school, it's like survival mode. Like, you feel like everyone is looking at you all the time. You just, you know, I don't know. I just personally feel like that was how I felt. And, like, I just felt like everyone was looking and hating on me for everything I did. When in reality, they probably weren't even looking at me. But I just feel like I got in my head so much about that. Um, but for me, I feel like surviving school is like I just said, like finding things that you do enjoy. Like, I feel like it's hard to say that because there was literally nothing I did. But even if I had that one lesson where I knew, OK, like this is my safety zone, like I know I'm going to have a good time or I'm going to have an OK time in this lesson. I'd really, really make sure like I embrace that one lesson where I felt like I was OK and like safe because in some lessons I'd be like, I'm with everyone I don't like, I don't want to be here. So, yeah, I feel like surviving is quite a big topic because, you know, it's different for everyone but like if there is problems going on at school like talk to someone don't keep it in and like you don't need to have a massive friend group oh my god I hate when people sit there and they're like oh it's so important you have a big friend group at school no like it's not important if you don't have that not everyone's going to experience it so I personally think yeah don't pressurize yourself be friends with everyone be nice to everyone but you don't have to be in a big friend group and have them stereotypes of like the popular girls and the mean girls and all of that like just just be normal just don't don't treat anyone with disrespect um how do you prepare and cope with exams like GCSEs I feel like people always come for me and say like oh she didn't even do well so she can't even talk on this subject but personally for me the subjects that I struggle with the most I paid the most attention to and I actually ended up acing and getting really really good grades so well not good to everyone but for me I was really proud I'd never passed a maths exam in my life and then for my GCSEs I was two marks away from a five which is really really good because my tutor the week before said I don't think she's going to scrape a four well she didn't say that but she implied it to my mum and my mum told me after but I personally think that I did really well because you can't get higher than a five anyways in um, maths foundation. So for me, if you actually put in the energy and the time, you will see results. And my mum used to say to me, nice to say, shut up, mum, I don't want to do it. But 
it does work. And for me, yeah, literally, I do like practice papers every single night before bed. I'd go over the certain topics that I hated, um, which would just literally be like, I'd get a whole questionnaire of like algebra and then just sit there and do it. It was the worst time of my life, but it was also the best because it made me actually realize that if you do put in the effort, you do get the outcome that you want. So it's definitely something that I learned. Um, I think if you are able to get a tutor, then it's definitely worth it, even though it was a drag and I had a tutor every single day other than Saturday and Sunday. Um, and I used to literally scream at my mum and say, please let me have a day off, I can't be bothered. But I did two hours of English tutoring three times a week and then two hours, two hours of maths twice a week and I couldn't be where I am today without my tutors they were the, they were the best but um I think schools also do a lot of like after school sessions so yeah I definitely think going to your after school clubs can be really helpful what was your favorite year at school year four no year three I had the best teacher ever his name was Mr Smiles I'll never forget him he made me really happy and I used to like watching Wallace and Gromit because of him because it used to make me think of him <laughs> I didn't have a crush on him. I had a crush on my PE teacher though in year three. Um, so I'd say that was probably like my favourite, my favourite year. I don't even remember what we did. I just remember like star of the week, I'd always get it. And I used to get really gassed. So year three. And then in secondary school, if I had to say a year, year 10 was my favourite year, I'd say. Because the bullying calmed down so much by year 10. And I had a really, really good well, not friend group, there was three of us, me, Dan and George, if you guys remember, um, we were like best, best friends. And like, I love them boys with my whole heart. They literally made me survive school. So I wouldn't be here without them. Um, someone said, do you have any advice for dealing with bullies? I think like, it sounds, it sounds easier done than it actually is because when I was in this situation, like I didn't want to hear it. First of all, they are literally jealous of you. When I was in school, my mum used to say to me, they're jealous, I used to say, why? I don't get it. And now I look back, like, the things that people did was all out of, like, spite and jealousy. So it's really hard to get yourself in that mindset. But now I look back at it, I was like, I just wish I could shake myself and say, like, they were jealous, it's fine, you're fine. Um, but I definitely think, like talk to someone and don't worry about being a snake because I got called a snake my whole entire school life. And I used to just think, okay, I'm Taylor Swift, it's fine, because she got called a snake too. But I actually got called a snake because I used to grasp and tell the teachers everything that happened because that's what you have to do. If you get in that situation, you should tell the school what's going on because they will help you. And sometimes I do think if I didn't tell the school, I could have been seriously hurt by people. So from telling them, it made me have like that kind of bubble of like I felt a bit more protected so tell someone even if it's not the school straight away you can speak to like a parent or you know guardian or someone that you trust with a lot of things and get it off your chest and like if it's actually like your mental health that's affected by bullying I think do something that you love for me it was dance like I used to just express myself and dance but it doesn't have to be a club that you have to pay for it could literally be you dancing in the garden or it could be you know there's so much you can do you can journal you know, just take some notebooks from school and just journal. Um, that was always quite helpful as well. So I'd say that's like my top tips for anyone. But you'll be okay and you can get through it. That's the main thing. Um, I've been feeling really distant from my friends over the summer holidays. How do I cope with my friendship group changing and my friends leaving? I feel like, yeah, summer's always a bit weird. Like people always end up like going off and just not really, you know, texting as much, which is just completely fine because I feel like you're busy. Um, but I'd say maybe just check in. Like if it's like a week before school started, I know school's gone back now. Um, but like if it's, you know, next half term, you feel like that week you just don't really talk to your friends. You know, two days before, maybe just check in and say, do you guys want to go to like Costa and get a coffee? You know, just just make sure that they know that you still think about them because I feel like sometimes friendships, like you both think that you're you're not thinking of each other, but you are both thinking of each other. It's just no one's given that, you know, like first text to say, hey. So I'd say, yeah, maybe like just FaceTime them or ask to meet up if you have the time. Anyway, something that was like really big for the past month has been I've been traveling like nonstop. I personally feel like I'm still not over the amount of sleep that I've missed no I'm joking it's been good it's been so fun but I actually went on tour for the second time so we did girl squad on tour I feel like this was a lot smaller than the book tour that I did because the book tour was like a lot more people felt like it was very busy but it was also very quick and rushed because you sign books um more than this tour that I've just done with girl squad 
was so much fun because it was just so intimate and like I could really get to know everyone in the crowd, which was really nice. So we started off by doing a show and it was like a one and a half hour long where we like answer questions, get you guys in the crowd involved. And like we was playing like games where it was like, do you rate or hate this outfit and things like that. It was quite fun. Um, and then we moved on to the meet and greet after where we spent so much individual time with every single one of you. And I thought it was so fun. Um, but you guys might have seen that on social media and people were saying like, oh, no one turned up. But for the capacity of the room that we held it in, you literally couldn't have any more people. So as much as I know it looked tiny and it looked like there was no one there, it was actually really nice to get to know everyone on a really, really like hardcore level. Instead of sometimes I feel like at meet and greets, it's a bit like, hey, and then they like push you away and you're like, oh, it was nice to see you. So I thought it was really nice and I loved how intimate it was. Um, but we've got some questions. So someone said, can you tell us about the girls' tour? I've just told you. I feel like if I waffle on anymore, you'll hate me. So we'll move on to the next one. Where was your favourite city? I'm not going to lie. I'm a lover for Dublin. I literally love it there and I really, really want to go back. But I feel like the flow of the tour, my favourite date was probably Manchester. I feel like we'd got in such a like swing of what we were doing. Everyone was on really, really good energy levels. More than Dublin, I feel like most of the girls were so tired and hangry the whole time. Um, I felt fine. I think I got like the tiredness after the tour more than the girls got it through the tour. But the first tour in Glasgow, I was literally on my deathbed. I felt so ill. Um, I did the show and I was so bunged up and had a bad cough. And I just, the whole time I was holding the microphone, I was like, <coughs> like trying to like pull it away from me because I felt so ill. So I definitely say I wish I could have went back to Glasgow when I felt better and seen how I enjoyed it then. But it was still fun and London was amazing too. I saw so many familiar faces, which was so fun. Um, the next one was, how long have you been friends with the girl squad? So I have been friends with Grace for five years now. That's crazy, five years. So me and Grace have been friends for five years. Me and I have been friends for probably like four and a half, no, three and a half, I'd say. Um, and then me and Tula become friends a little bit later. She just started TikTok a bit later than the other two. It's probably like two years now I've been friends with Tula, or maybe one and a half, maybe one and a half, you know. Yeah, I'd say one and a half. I've known like Tallulah. So yeah, I actually love them all. They were so much fun on the tour. And I feel like people kept asking, what is like your favourite moment and memory of the tour? And there was two. We, me, Naya and the three managers all went out um, after dinner in Dublin. We didn't go out like clubbing. We just walked around because I was like, please, I'm so curious of this place. So he was walking around and like, we didn't go in any of the bars or the pubs, but we were just standing outside and we had to get a picture outside Temple Bar. And I was like, Naya, Naya Temple, huh? Um, and we were just having the best fun. So I'd say that was my like core favorite moment ever was like traveling and seeing Dublin. But I also really enjoyed, like we always say this, all the girls say, like the moments that we loved the most was when we weren't working. There was no phones involved. Like we were just playing like, late night karaoke in our hotel rooms, like things like that is what I really, really enjoyed the most. So I said there was so much, but that was probably my favorite. And obviously like favorite memory with the girls, but favorite memory overall was probably meeting you guys. Like it was just so much fun. And I had so, so, so much fun. I loved it. Um, Someone's asked, who is your best friend? I hate this question because they're all my best friends and I'm close with every single one of the girls there. So I'd say they're my best friends. Also Scarlett, also Jude, also Eloise. I have a lot of best friends. I don't like saying best friends. It just makes me feel bad. I definitely say like, I'm so close with Naya. Like I tell that girl my whole entire life. And yeah, um, anyway, pop culture. There's so much pop culture and I can't believe VMAs is in like two days. Like I'm pulling the biggest all nighter. When this is out, VMAs would have been and you'd see my reaction to if I cry or not. But I love a good pop singer I just think it's like the best thing ever you know like Sabrina Taylor Gracie like it's just my vibe like I call them the glitter pen and no one gets me but if you know you know like the glitter pen singers like they're just glitter pens but I actually saw Lana Del Rey recently she's insane live but I'm not gonna lie the crowd was so bad at Reading Festival it ruined it for me I just wish like the boys around me weren't chanting like Lana the banana the whole time like it was just really not the vibe I probably will end up going back if there's a good singer but the lineup this year just wasn't my vibe. I'm not into the bands, um, maybe one day, but I did go and see Chunks and Philly's live podcast show and the crowd was crazy. And a lot of the people in the crowd were coming up to me saying, why are you here? And I said, there's nothing else to watch. And I think the Chunks and Philly are really cool. So 
that was what I did at Running Festival for day one. We just dotted about. Um, but it was really nice because I met so many of you and so many people were like, why is your podcast not on the live show? We would have came and watched. And I said, I'm too scared to do that. But it was nice meeting you all. Um, but someone said, what was your reaction to Molly and Tommy breaking up? It's actually on video, but I haven't got it. It's My videographer's got it. But basically he came round. We filmed like a car video. It was like getting my first car. And then we was doing an advert for a really, really cool company. And... Whilst we were doing it, I literally hear a scream from downstairs and I thought Bluey's got out, Hugo's gone missing, like something bad's happened. And my sister stormed up the stairs and I was like, Georgia, can you shut up because I'm trying to film? She ran in my room and was like, no, 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 this can't wait. Tommy and Molly broke up, look. And I was like, I didn't even know what to say because I feel like I'm a Molly May stan. I'm not here for Tommy, but he was a cute little bonus to the, the collection. But... Yeah, like it really did break my heart and I hope Bambi's okay. That's all I've got to say on this situation. And if I ever meet Molly May, I'm just going to give her a big hug. There's nothing else to really be said other than I love her and I always have. So, yeah, I love you, Molly. And I keep watching her YouTube videos of when they were still together and get really sad. I don't know why I do it to myself. Like, I always do this. Um, but what is your favourite Taylor Swift song? <laughs> hmm. Right now, oh, it changes every day. Like, I swear, I really like Loss of My Life. It's just, it hits differently. Um, I really like it. And I really like You're Losing Me right now. I don't know what's going on with me. Delicate. There's so many right now that I'm just in like a bit of a, I think I'm in my sad girl era with Taylor Swift. So yeah, I'm not really going through the happy vibes. I'm just going through like all the sad songs with her. Um, but my overall like top, top, top favorite song ever is definitely, oh my God, all too well, 10 minute version. I know that song off like the beat, like honestly, word for word best song ever um but my mum's right now is Fortnite. she's really got into Fortnite, and at the end of the song when it's like taylor and post malone and they do like their little tiny bit oh my god me and my mum we're like shh, 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 it's a good part and we listen to it it's my favorite right now so each like i said i just said like four different songs but love you tay um will you go to any more concerts soon i don't think there's any more concerts on that I'm like a big fan of this year. But next year, I've got Sabrina Carpenter and Gracie Abrams and Billy, I think I'm going to. I'm trying to get resale. Because do you know what it is, right? I was a Billy, like, day dot fan. And then I went through a phase where I wasn't really, like, as big of a fan because I didn't not listen to her. I think it was, like, I listen to all her old songs still to this day, like Zanny, I Wish You Were Gay. Them songs are, like, my... When I was getting bullied, I used to just listen to them every single day. And I've still got a beanie that says, well, not it doesn't say anything, but it has the man um, that Billie Eilish was her merch back then. So I've still got all her merch. But I think I just kind of like, before her album came out recently, like I just stopped thinking about her. And then when the album came out, I was like, I just love her. She's just amazing. So I'm really excited to go to hers if I can go. Um, but me and Grace Condor, the whole tour, was just talking about her and just how beautiful she is. And I just love Billie Eilish. But yeah, someone said, who's your favourite Love Islander from this season? I feel so bad saying this because I love them all. But one that I just really love, like, I just, I think I fangirled a bit hard, was Grace. She's just so cool. And I really like her and I'd aspire to be her when I'm older. So I'd definitely say Grace from Love Island. Who has been your favourite podcast since you last answered this question? Gotta say the most iconic episode I've ever filmed was with Heather Bowling. So love you, Hev. She's just a queen. I just love her. Um. So, I feel like this is a really rude question. Who's the prettiest influencer you've met? I could not pinpoint one girl that I thought was the prettiest. I think every single one of them that has been sat on this sofa or that I've met that I truly do love has been because I think they're just beautiful. Like, there's not one person that I could really say is the prettiest. I feel like they all they all look so different, but they're all so beautiful at the same time. So, yeah, I don't think there's one. Um, would you do a UK Youngers reunion? Why not? I'd do one any day of the week. I feel like it'd be really fun. Someone has asked, right, we're going to go into beauty now because I feel like there's so many questions that I get for my beauty and, like, I am a bit of, like, a enthusiastic weirdo when it comes to, like, skincare, makeup. So I'm going to give you my top tips. Someone has asked, is your hair naturally blonde? It is. I've had it highlighted. I've got baby lights done, um, but I think they've all been washed out now practically. So this is, like, my natural colour probably, as you can see right now. I do want to go blonder. My hairdresser hates me. And that's the story of my life. Uh, what are your favourite skincare products? I'm going to say 
the BHA toner from Paula's Choice is an absolutely amazing toner for your skin. So I'd say either the toner or their essential glow moisturizer, which has got SPF in it, and it's so good for your skin. And it makes me look like I've got makeup on when I haven't. I love it. And then my makeup product, I love the Charlotte Tilbury contour stick. I've used it for four years now. Since it first came out, and Madison Beer used it. I have had that contour stick and I love it. It's amazing and it's lasting me so long. So I say the contour stick. And then someone's asked, can you tell us about your hair care routine? I don't have a hair care routine. I use different shampoos every single week. Um, so I can't even give you like a hair care routine. I just wash my hair once or twice a week, slick it back sometimes using this hair oil that's like five pound from Boots. It's like green lid. But other than that, yeah, I don't use a set conditioner. I'm still trying to find a good shampoo and conditioner that works with my hair. And what fake tan do you use? I have been sent so many the past month and I haven't fake tanned yet because I'm keeping my natural tan for as long as possible. But I will get back to you on that because I feel like I need to try all of them again to remember which one's my favourite. So I'm excited to see because I love a bit of fake tan. But yeah, Soul Skin was my favourite for a while. So I'd say Soul Skin at the moment, but you never know. Might get beaten, but I know it won't because I actually do love it. Um, Love. We're going into love. Wow. I love these questions. Uh, who was your first love? I don't want to even talk about it, okay? He's not needed to be named. So sometimes I used to say Alfie was my first love. And then some days I'm like, no, he wasn't my first love. Personally, like me and my mum had this conversation. Like proper boyfriend was my ex-boyfriend. He was my first proper boyfriend. So I feel like you'd consider him as like your first love instead of Alfie, who was more of like a boyfriend, but we were more just friends. So I don't really know what I'd say for that one. Always love and respect Alfie. Uh, not so much my first love. Not big respect for him. Uh, what happened with your last boyfriend? I can't lie, not much. I feel like people wanted juicy info. Just not really my vibe. Just didn't gel very well. And I feel like, yeah, we didn't last long. It was like two months and he was binned off. Well, he wasn't binned off, but that sounds really horrible. But like, I still like, we're still friends. No bad blood between me and him. But yeah, no, I feel like to be fair, we just rushed into a relationship status instead of like taking things slow with a talking stage. Um, but yeah, I just think he was quite unserious. Um, and yeah, I just didn't really feel like we blended very well in the end. You never know what happens in the future. But uh, what lessons have you learned from your past relationships? To never trust a man. Honestly, no, I'm joking. That's really rude. I do like think, you know, like my dad's a good guy. You know, there's good guys out there. Um, but yeah, no, I haven't had much luck with the past two. I feel like they've just treated me like absolute rubbish and then like chatted to another girl whilst being with me. So that's probably what I've learned the most is like, you shouldn't give it your all to someone. No, do you know what? I'm a bit of too much of a lover and like I just put my all into people that don't deserve it. So I'd say what I've learned is to not be so like obsessed so quick. Saying that whilst I'm literally obsessed with someone, that's really embarrassing. Are you chatting to anyone? Yeah, I am. <laughs> I said on this podcast like a month and a half ago. No. Yeah. I was like, I don't like anyone. I'm never getting a boyfriend. Yeah. I haven't got a boyfriend, so it's not that bad. But do you know what it is, right? I went through a phase where literally I was like, don't want a boyfriend. I pushed this boy away and just didn't give him like any sort of like, you know, not attention, but like I just wasn't in the right frame of mind to really be like putting in commitment to someone. And then recently I've come home, like I know I've got more time now and I met up with him a few times and yeah, it's going well. There's no status, so I'm still single, but yeah, call me someone that talks to a lot of people. I don't, Do you know, I just really, yeah, really like this one. And then we're going to talk about influencing, which is the last topic, but I feel like a very main topic because you guys always have a lot of questions. Someone has asked, how did you feel when you first started being recognised as an influencer? I remember I was so excited, like Loki loved being noticed. I still do now, but I feel like back then maybe I would circle around a few group of people a few times because I wanted them to like come over and say hi. I was just so excited and I just thought it was so cool that like people knew who I was. Um, but yeah, I think... How did I feel? Like a lot of my friends when they first got noticed was a bit like, oh my God, like anxious, but I love it. And it's like, you know, you guys are my friends. So I don't really see it as like, oh, fan. Like when people say like, oh, I love my fans. I'm like, you're not my fans. You're like my sisters or my friends. So yeah, I would say I was just really excited. Has life changed since you started your pod? I think, do you know one thing that I've actually got better at is talking, <laughs> which is ironic, isn't it? Because I sit here and talk 
But I think YouTube's like a great way of like, you know, talking to the camera. That's you and a camera in a bedroom or like in a kitchen by yourself. And I think doing this podcast has made me have to like socialize and learn communication skills that I never had before. Like sometimes, even now I still do it, I interrupt really badly. I think it's just like I get really excited and then I like blur over people because like I'm so excited and like I talk at a very high pace with my friends and I expect everyone else to but not always that's the case. So I definitely think like learning to be quiet because people do have more to say than you might think, Emily. Um, and yeah, I just think, yeah, like communication wise and also confidence wise, like from when I first started this pod to now, I feel like I've become a lot more confident, not even on camera, but more outside world as well because like I know I've got to greet someone I've got to make sure they're comfortable and like talk to them before the camera's even filming like we're having conversations that people don't see so I definitely think it's something that I've learned a lot from and I love doing my pod uh what's your worst fan experience I would say when Reading Festival was an experience in itself I had a lot of girls come over saying are you okay because grown boys were like literally getting me in a chokehold trying to get a picture with me and like I would never say no like I'm not going to be rude to be like no and walk away like that influencer did to me because I'm not like that I actually do enjoy meeting you guys but I think sometimes there's that level of like personal space and like I don't mind like I'll put my arm around you I'll cuddle you I don't mind but like let me know that you're going to do it before you just literally come from behind and like grab me by my neck. Like, it's kind of scary. So I think definitely the boys at Running Festival, not all, some were so respectful. Like, some of them were really nice. And like, quite a few of them, like, would be like, oh, do you mind me putting my arm around you? And I'd be like, yeah, it's fine. But like, some people that like, I didn't know were coming would literally like grab me from behind, like, like almost like get me in like a, I don't even know, weird weird position with my neck. And I felt like I was literally getting strangled. And my friend Scarlett was just standing there like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. She was getting really anxious. I can't lie. That's really the one time that I've ever felt like really overwhelmed with people. Yeah, because people were just coming from everywhere. So I'd probably say that was my worst fan experience. But again, I don't really like calling you fans. Um, what was your favorite brand collab? Definitely Pretty Little Thing. I love Pretty Little Thing. They're my favorite. What is your next big goal? Um, I've actually got something that I've announced now finally, which is I've got my own brand coming out, which I'm so excited for. And I've seen people say, oh, she's put her name to something that she's not even got any input in. When I tell you, I have spent the past month and a half properly brainstorming, thinking of all the ideas. Me and this lovely lady have been working together. Of course, I'm not taking like oh, full pride. I've got a whole team behind me to help me out. But we are literally cracking down to make sure this product is exactly what I want it to be. And I'm so excited for you guys to see what it is. I think it's very on brand and it's very something that you'd expect me to come out with but that should be coming out in easter and yeah we had our first kickoff meeting about a week and a half ago in manchester and wow like it was so cool to see how much is going to be put into this brand and how cool it's going to be um but yeah that's coming soon so i think that's probably my next big goal is like cracking down on this company i've been doing so much research behind the scenes of like making sure i actually understand properly like what it is like to run a company and at the moment, it's just kind of understanding like what job role I want to have as in part of the company, um, which is going to be really exciting. But yeah, it's coming soon, guys. Easter time. Um, but yeah, there's a lot that I want to do with it. I want to like take it on, you know, I want it to be on shop floors. I want it to be, I want to do pop-ups. I want you guys to come meet me everywhere. Like I want to drop it down in Ireland again and like do some cool stuff like that. So I think definitely keep your eyes peeled. We've got a while, but I feel like it'll come around so quickly these days. But my big goal is to definitely make sure that this company comes out exactly how I'd want it to. And it's not rushed and nothing like that, which I think we, we haven't rushed it. We've been talking about this for the past three, three months longer than that. Six months. I love it. It's the best. Where will you live when you move out? I don't know. I'm indecisive if I want to move to Manchester or not. Um, so for now, who knows? I'm happy where I'm living. I wish we lived a little bit closer to London, but can't tell my dad to move out because that would be very, very wrong. He can live where he wants. So therefore, yeah, I just think for now, like I am happy where I'm living. I don't really feel the need to like rush and move out as of right now. Um, so yeah, that's the that's the kind of plan. So that was the last question. Thank you everyone that just sent in your questions. And I hope that clears up a lot of the problems and the questions and the dilemmas that we've been having sent to us. Guys, thank you so, so much for listening to this episode. Make sure to subscribe to the show now on YouTube as well as follow us on Spotify or your podcast app of choice. And you can like, comment and leave a review now. And make sure you follow us over on Instagram at Amy Charlize's Private Story and send me over all your questions, stories and dilemmas. We literally love hearing from you guys. And you can also follow me now on TikTok and Snapchat too. And we're taking a break, so we'll be back very, very soon for a new episode. Love you lots. Bye.